Hello everyone and welcome to our perspective lecture. Today we're going to go over the second way you can create form using line. So let's just do a quick review of ways that you can create the illusion of space or depth. So far in this class we've gone over negative space, which is the space behind or around an object. But there's more than one way to create the illusion of space. You can use overlapping, diminishing size, spatial planes, linear perspective, or atmospheric perspective. Um, out of all of these, we're going to cover uh, first linear perspective and atmospheric perspective. These are the use of line to create the illusion of space. Spatial planes is when objects go, uh, objects that are further back appear higher on the picture plane. As you look at the picture here, each, this picture demonstrates the first three characteristics of space overlapping, diminishing size, and spatial planes. Where do you see these characteristics? You'll notice if you look at the red lines below, the trees are an excellent indication of space. Linear perspective was first observed by uh, Filippo Brunelleschi, um, who was alive from 1377 to 1446. He was what we consider a Renaissance master. Uh, Brun Brunelleschi first noticed that when he was painting the buildings of Florence, um, and he was looking at them through a mirror, he noticed that when he observed the tops of buildings, that straight edge, when he look, observed those straight edges, they all converged on a single point. Before Brunelleschi, this is how artists painted buildings. What is wrong with this picture? Think of those characteristics of space. Okay, where do we see, where do we see some errors? Well, number one, there are examples of overlapping. Okay, but diminishing size is definitely skewed. If you look at the gentleman over here, this gentleman here, let me get my pointer. Okay, he's just about as tall as the building. Well, that doesn't make sense. When we think about the spatial planes, we think, notice how the, they're kind of, these people are stacked up on top of each other. Okay, the spatial planes is also skewed. You'll also notice if you look at the direction of the top of the buildings, they're all going in different directions. This is a, a painting after the observation of perspective. How does this change? Well, number one, you'll notice that the characters in the foreground, uh, this is Christ giving Matthew the keys to the kingdom. Uh, these, uh, the, the apostles are much larger than these characters in the background. You'll also notice that the vertical lines are converging on a single point. Can you tell me where that point is? If you guessed that center building, then you would be correct. The point that these that the lines converge on is called the vanishing point, where all the lines vanish. So if we look at this picture, the vanishing point appears to be at the top of the hill. A vanishing can, point can be on the page, such as we see with the railroad tracks. It can also be off of the page, like we see with these buildings. For our, uh, our drawings, our vanishing points are going to go past the edges of our page. How many lines in this drawing, or how many objects, I should say, are converging on the vanishing point? First off, where is the vanishing point? If you guessed the back, that door all the way in the background, you would be correct. But how many things align with this vanishing point? Well, the floors. Excuse me. The floors, the ceiling, the windows, the uh, the door frames, any all horizontal lines converge upon the vanishing point. Okay, so that is the goal. All lines, all horizontal lines must converge on the vanishing point. Can anybody guess where the vanishing point is located here? Did you guess correctly? The answer is Jesus. When in doubt at Spalding, the answer is Jesus. A couple of vocabulary words for you to know as we move forward. 
So we've already gone over vanishing point where the lines converge. We also have the horizon line. Everything above your horizon line is your sky. Everything below your horizon line is the ground. Think about when we look into the horizon, we're looking into the distance. That's what we're looking at. And then finally, orthogonal. The names of those lines that go towards the vanishing point, those are called orthogonals. A lot of these terms are commonly used in geometry. We are going to be creating a two-point perspective um, for this class. Uh, your homework tonight will be to create three cubes, one from worm's eye, looking above, one from street eye, looking at, and one from bird's eye, looking down, using perspective. We are going to be creating two-point perspective tree houses. How will I know that you've sketched in two-point perspective? Well, you know you've done it correctly when the first thing you see is the corner. We always start with the corner first. That's how you know something is in two-point perspective. When you sketch from a dramatic angle looking directly up, or looking dramatically up, or looking dramatically down, um, this is called three-point perspective. In photography, this is often called an obelisk shot. So as I mentioned earlier, the vanishing point typically runs off the edge of the page. And there's a reason for this, um, because you'll notice here, the further the vanishing point is, such as on the left, the further the vanishing point is from the cube, the less pitched or less angled the cubes look. Notice here on the right, these angles are pretty dramatic. We want a more realistic looking treehouse. So again, the further the vanishing points are, the flatter and more realistic it will look. So again. That's why we're doing our vanishing points off the edge of the page. Uh, there's also nonlinear perspective. Um, Leonardo da Vinci first observed this, uh, so again, another Renaissance master, um, observed that when he looked into objects in the distance, they often have a bluish haze to them and appear less detailed. Here is a great example of atmospheric perspective. Notice how the hills in the foreground, this area in the front, are much more detailed than these hills in the background. As objects get further away from us, they become blurrier and blurrier. Hence why we can't see details far away, but we can see details up close. This is due to the atmosphere. So again, we will also be using non-linear uh, non perspective in our drawings as well. Okay, guys. So what we're going to be, what you would like, I would like you to do now is head on over to the perspective homework page and watch the video to create those three cubes I mentioned earlier. Please feel free to email me if you have any questions. Good luck.